Alrighty guys, Moray back here with my best ARC single player settings for 2022. So what we're going to start off here is with, we're going to boost your difficulty level all the way up to 1. Usually starts off at 0.2 I believe. Then you guys are going to want to leave your damage, dino damage, alone. But for your player damage, I like to bump that up to 2.05. So that way you can at least take out a Lystro or a Dodo in one or two hit. Instead of having to chase it down the beach. But for your structure damage, we leave that alone. But for your player resist, I'm going to have that set to 0 0.4. So that way, just in case, out of nowhere, a 150 Sarko comes flying out of the water and starts attacking you, you at least have a chance to get away without it just one-shotting you. Same with your dinos here. We don't want that you to get just swarmed with raptors or anything. You got at least some time to get your dino out of there. But for structures, jets. Yeah, again, just so that way they're not immediately destroyed by Rexes or something. But here for your XP multiplier, we want to bump that up to 1.85. So that way you it's almost double. This is going to make it so that way the first 30 to 50 levels you can easily get by just crafting and killing dinosaurs. So basically while you're just getting everything set up and going, you should be able to get the 30 to 50 pretty easily. Next up, we have our taming speed, which is set to 10. That way, you're not just sitting there all day, but at least you're. it does take you uh, some time to get everything tamed. Next up, we have our structure damage repair cooldown. I have that set to 25.009. That way, it's not instantaneous, but you're not waiting 20 minutes, so that way you can repair your base. Dino turret damage, I have that doubled so that way turrets at least can defend off some dinosaurs at least while they're attacking you dino harvest damage I've left that alone it's base for me no matter what every time I reset my settings it's always 3.2 but yep I just left that alone uh, harvest amount again it's almost doubled I have it set to 1.85 so that way you you're almost getting double but it's not as much that way you can get some resources fairly quickly but not so much that you're over encumbered immediately next up we have the player character water drain and food drain i have the water drain set to 0 0.5 so it's cut in half that way you're not constantly trying to go for water you can at least explore a bit away from the rivers and lakes without a fl without a water skin or a cantina same with food so that way you don't have to be carrying an excessive amount of food on you. You can just probably run off with a stack or two and be good for a hot minute. So I have that set down to 0 0.35. Next up, we have our Dino Character Food Drain. I actually have this doubled, so that way it makes taming go faster. So that way the Dino's food will drain faster, and that way it will eat faster while you're taming it. But do remember to keep food on your dinosaurs, because this will affect your tamed ones as well. Then for the player character stamina drains and the dino character stamina drain, I have the player set to 35 so that way when you're trying to run away from something you don't just get 5 feet away and run out of stamina and boom you're dead. Same with your dinosaur here so that way you're not flying say on your pterodon over the redwoods and run out of stamina because you forgot to pay attention to that. Next up I have the health recoveries for the player and dino. Player, I have boosted up to up to almost two times, which this is gonna this isn't gonna rapidly make you instantly heal up, but you'll go through and heal up a little a little bit faster. I have the dinosaur set or dino character one set here to two, so that way they get they have the same amount. Just remember to keep food and remember that the higher you have your health recovery set here, the more food you're gonna drain from your like yeah, the more food you're gonna drain so I have the player set to 1.85 and the dino set to 2 for player harvest damage I have that set to 2.7 so that way you're not just sitting there whacking on a tree all day dino count I've left alone and I've also left the non dedicated non dedicated host tether you can you can bust bump this up to a hundred or ninety nine so that way you're if you do play with people this should these settings should work fairly good with maybe two to five other people you know just some normal single player maybe you have a buddy or two hop in but you can bump that up to 99 I have mine set to zero 
because I don't play with other people. Dino count, do not touch. That's already set as high as it's going to probably want to go. Next up, we have our checkboxes down here. And what we're going to have you do is I have no crosshair enabled. So that way I can use, say, all the gun attachments to make them more useful. So I have the crosshair turned off. This is optional. You don't have to turn off your crosshair. Then what I have turned off is the single player settings do not have those turned on. Uh, I you can, It's optional to show player location as well. I have it turned off so that way the compass and GPS are more useful and needed. And then what next we have up is the max difficulty. You want this selected so that way your dinosaurs will spawn at 150. Not all of them will, but it will make it so that way dinosaurs will spawn at 150 on all maps. Again, this is where the single player settings are. Do not have it checked. I am going easy on myself here just in case you do die. I know I have the other things turned off, but I do have corpse locator on, so that way you'll have the green pillar going up in the sky. Then I also have disable structure placement collision, so that way you can build fair, fairly in like rougher terrain without having stuff. Like you know where you have a there's a place where you can clearly put it, but it says it won't and it's clipping. So this will allow you to clip through the terrain and all that and let you place. Next up I have the allow multiple platform floors. This is just so that way you can build an upstairs on your platform. Then I also have unlimited respects so that way say you transfer over to Genesis and you want to go get some of the new stats you can just take a mind wipe tonic and you don't have to worry about you if you've already taken a mind wipe tonic on this character or not. And then next up this is this is for the Xbox only part because there are mods on PC. I'm pretty sure this also works for PC, but Xbox players, pay attention here. This does not work on Xbox for some reason. I have tried it no matter what, no matter everything I do on Xbox, this will auto turn off no every time I launch into single player. It will auto uncheck. I have no clue why, but for me, it auto unchecks. But on PC, it does work. I'm able to have that turned on. Next up, we're going to our advanced settings. And also, be sure to turn off P PvP Gamma if that if you want to be able to use the night vision or like the lights in the game better. I have that turned off. That is optional as well. I also have uh, PVE turned off so that way you can kill baby dinosaurs when you breed them. So that way, if you get a bad one, you don't have to worry about dis disposal. And then up next we have the advanced settings and what you're going to want to select here is allow cave building PVE and allow flyer carry PVE. This is just for when your friends get in here and you want to play with them. And next up, don't worry about any of this. I don't really know what most of it does. Force allow cave flyers. This is so that way on, uh, what is it, Volgara and the center and I believe Lost Island I don't know this is so that way you can fly in their aberrant caves and all that in the center there I know that the center has some like major underground cave systems that is very helpful to fly fly through and then you want the override structure placement prevention this will allow you to build spikes and turrets on the back of platform saddles and up next is the PVP stuff I don't change any of this. We ain't doing PvP. Then we have our world settings. And what we have here at first are our breeding settings. So these are set up fairly easy. First off, we have our pooping interval. I have that set up to two. So that way, when you're farming, you can at least have some poop lying around and you're not sitting there wondering where all your poop is. This way, you can just run up to, uh, what are they called? Fiomias and spam a stack of berries and you'll have probably 20 piles of poop. Next up we have our laying egg interval. I have this set down to 0 0.01. You do not have to change this at all. This is a pr very like setting just for like if you're having trouble making kibble and you're making a lot of it. But be careful with this. The lower this is the more like the with the poop and the eggs that's the more stuff that's going to be coming out of your dinosaurs and laying just on the floor in the game. 
and if it's all loaded in, that could cause some lag. So do be careful with this. I do have mine set to 0 0.01, so that way I can at least have a couple dozen eggs to make kibble every now and again. But for mating interval, I have this set down to 0 0.07. This will allow you to breed basically every three to five minutes, I believe. Three on T-Rexes, I would think it was, and five on a Giga when I checked. Um, but yeah, the egg hatching speed, again, this is probably going to be take you this is set to 12 but for some reason it drops down to 11.999 so basically somewhere in between 11 and 12 is a magic number that will get you in between like five to seven minutes on an egg depending on how big it is although on much smaller eggs it should only take two to three minutes but then we have the mature speed this is set to 10 and you need to be pay very close attention to your mature speed and your butt your baby cuddle interval multiplier these will basically say how much uh, either your imprintation does and all that so what we have our baby mature speed is set to 10 this is perfect so that way it, you're not sitting there like for three or four days waiting for it to grow up this should have it done within a couple of hours and with our cut baby cuddle interval spe speed uh, Oh, actually, this should have it done in about eight minutes, sorry. Uh, but the cuddle, baby cuddle interval, that makes it so that way uh, you have to imprint every eight or nine minutes on the creature. And uh, I believe on a wyvern, it was at 50%. So a wyvern should take about 16 minutes with 10%. And on a snow owl, it was at 75 But next up, we have our baby food consumption speed. I have that set to 1.8. 1.898 it's almost up to 2 so that way they're at least consuming food and like healing up so that way they don't die uh, but do be careful if they run out of food they will start dying uh, you can also leave that alone if you want next up we have the resources we don't pay attention to those the baby cuddle grace period multiplier I have that set down to 0 0.4 I really have no clue how much that does but from what my friends have told me on Xbox is that they usually run it around 0 0.4 and all that and for the baby cuddle uh, imprint loss quality and the imp like the, I'm pretty sure the grace period and imprinting quality are only if you're not sitting there and not getting an insta imprint so you shouldn't even be worried about these baby imprinting scale though um, this is how much like like your imprintation like if you have it at hundred percent this is how much it's going to buff the stats when you write it. I have mine set to 1.5, almost one and a half times more. You can set this up to two or three, but again, it will start making your creatures really, really strong the higher you have it. Then I have my day cycle speed cut in half here. I have it set to 0 0.5, so that way day and night, they do take quite a bit of time. Not, not quite a bit of time, but they do take longer. For my spoil time, um, that is weird I I usually have my spoil time set down up to 1.5 and but for my item decomposure I usually have these and my corpse I usually have these set to two and uh, that is so that way you're not on a dead sprint trying to find your corpse or items that you dropped you at least have some time to find them then you also have the resources radius and all that I leave those alone but for crop, crop growth speed, I have that set to 9. So that way you're not having to play for several days for before your crops start to grow. should only take a couple hours here. But then I also have your crop decay speed set to 6. So that way instead of uh, once it runs out of food or, or like fertilizer or water, it doesn't immediately die. You at least got some time to go and save your plant. But next up, we have our stats per level for the wild dinos. Those are all set to 1, along with tame dino stats per level. Those are also set to 1. But now we get up to tame dinos add per level, in which these are going to determine how much our dinosaurs get added to. So I have our health first off set to 2, and our stamina set to 2. And then um, the next thing, one that we change is weight, and I have that bumped up to 20. So that way you're not worried about weight on a dinosaur. But then we have our damage set to 2 and speed and our fortitude. So that way 
we at least are getting some extra stuff on top of that when we get damage and speed and all that. Do be careful though with the speed on the flyers because the more speed you have on them, the faster they will go. And then we have the dino, tame dino stats affinity, in which these I'm pretty sure are the multipliers for your stats. So what it's going to do is take this times this, and that's what your dino stat will be. Um, so we have it all, n our health and stamina is at 1.5, then we left the rest alone until we got up to weight and damage and speed, and those are set to 1.5 as well. So that way you're just getting times one, like, 2.1 times I don't know <laughs> I can't think of the math right now um, but you are getting some decent stats on your dinosaurs per level and then next up we have our player stats per level which we have it all set to 4 except for the weight we have that set to 20 so basically on all the other stats you're getting I believe 40 plus and then on the weight you're getting 200 plus then we have our experience multiplier. I have these set up to 1.5. Again, uh, if you do change these, it's probably not going. Your first 30 to 50 levels are going to probably going to go either by faster or slower, depending if you what you change. I only have mine set to one times one and a half extra. You can bu bump this up to two, and basically, I believe if you bump it up to two, you're going to burn through all your levels pretty quick, and you're going to not have to worry about getting that much XP. Next up, we have our miscellaneous ones, and uh, this is going to allow like custom recipes and all that, and fl show floating damage text, that's optional and all that. But really, this is the part where you can start reading through and see if what you want, but, allow, but one thing I want to allow is allow raid dino feeding. And then you got the drain multiplier and all that. Then here we go down to our custom recipe effectiveness and custom recipe skill factor. I really do not know how to make custom recipes. I've never messed with that part of the game, so I do not mess with these settings. If you know how these settings work, great for you. You probably know what you need on them already if you know how they work. But then we have the crafting skill bonus multiplier. I have that bumped up to one. Then we have our loot quality for the supply crate. We have that set to three, so that way you, you're getting some journeymen and mastercraft stu stuff dropping. But for fishing loot, I like to have it up at five, so that way you have a better chance of getting, say, ascendant and all that from fishing. Something that takes a lot longer to do. It's pr it's easier to fly around and find supply crates than it is to just sit there and fish, personally for me. But you can also change these and buff them up as much as you go. I'm but I'm pretty sure if you go any higher than 5, everything is going to just constantly drop at Ascendancy. Or at Ascendant. For, but for fuel, con fuel consumption now, we do want to increase this up to 3.364. This is going to make it so that way gas and element, you don't burn through it like immediately as soon as you get it. You can at least have it run. So a piece will probably last you a good couple minutes uh, or a couple hours wood it's going to take a little bit longer for wood to burn but i but this is a great compromise for later in the game and and again by the time you're probably using bullets you probably already got an indie forge going so it's pretty easy to get gunpowder next up we have our increased platform structure limit i like to just slide this all the way up to five and call it good so that way it's five times as many platform or five times as many structures on a platform saddle so that way you can build maybe a decent looking base on the back of a Brano if you want. Um, next up is the active event. I have nothing set right now, but say if you want to swap it over to the Christmas event, summer event, or say events that no longer come by, like the archaeologist or yeah, the archaeologist event, that doesn't come by, you can have it that set, but I'm pretty sure that though if you do have those set, that the things on the beach that you need to collect don't really spawn. Alrighty. So now that we're done with our general and advanced settings, we're moving on to the mods. So Xbox players, I'm sorry, I don't have a way for you guys to do this. But the one mod that we're using just for bet like the good single player settings for PC is no cryo cooldown. And this is because we have it set to PvP and on PvP it will your cryopod's gonna take about seven minutes before you can throw out another one. 
but with this mod it should take none you can just throw you can just keep throwing them out but yeah uh, this is have been Gunshy More. Thank you for watching my video on the best art settings for single player in 2022. Um, please leave a like and subscribe, and please leave a comment on what you think about my settings or anything I can prove about them. I'm willing to take feedback. I'm even willing to take some mod suggestions if you have any. But thank you for tuning in and watching.